Hello, welcome everyone to our brand new podcast, the Tap Tap Cast. My name is Martin. You may also know me as Ineloquence. And I am Amanda, also known as Lundberger. We are two casters for the Play Pokemon circuit, casting over mostly the European region. And because of that, we can't think of anyone better to have on on our first ever episode, the most recent winner of the Dortmund Germany Regional, and that is uh, Arceus Aurelius. Hey! I'm Marcus Aurelius, and my 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 name is my name is Marcus. Uh, but thank you for wanting to have me on this uh, brand new incredible podcast. I I couldn't be more flattered, and that is actually my feelings that I'm incredibly flattered to be asked to attend to your brand new shiny adventure. Yeah, I mean. No better guess, right? Can you tell us a little bit about uh, about yourself? You've already been here uh, once, but uh, this is your second time. You are the only one to have been here two times. I just want to point it out as well, by the way. Oh, uh, now I assume you're talking about your other projects, your previous project that was also <laughs> podcast related. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I, I it's my second time and I'm very flattered that I can... Uh, pop the cherry of this podcast and uh, and um, for the second time in a way so, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, that's a paradox but I'll take it um I'm no I'm 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 very happy that you asked me and um I'm I've been playing Pokemon Go since uh, forever uh, like everyone else and uh, I'm uh, just super passionate about the game and I I just love what the game brings to my life i guess how did you get hooked up with the game originally were you like a pokemon fan for a long time i mean even before the play pokemon circuit came about too like were you more into the catching pokemon force or the pvp Uh, portion i uh i played a lot of pokemon showdown back in the day uh well a lot is maybe a stretch i play i played i played like for a couple of years uh, I like the highest I was on the ladder are single random battles. I don't know if you guys are aware of like know what the, what it is. Nope. Uh, yeah, you're not a Pokemon person, are you, Amanda? You're a Pokemon right, Go know. person, aren't you? Okay. Uh, she, so, she told me she right. never played another game before this. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, so um, I was uh, 2000 ELO or something at uh, random battles. Uh, for anyone who knows like what that means, I think it's like top 500 in the world or something. Uh, okay. Yeah, was, so I played I played it a lot for a couple of years. Uh, so I was super into Pokemon. Uh, I played Pokemon Go, of course. Uh, played almost all the main series games until I was like around. Yeah, actually, I think I played all main series games apart from, or at least every generation apart from okay, Generation Five, which apparently is the best generation. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, how how's the profanity, by the way? Mm, that's a good question. We haven't really talked about it. Martin, how's our profanity for this cast? Are we bleeping? Are we cutting? Are we just letting it roll? I just got some F4, F-bombs. But, All right, uh, well, yeah. we'll, we'll, we don't we'll need throw... to be like super yeah. clean as well. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, so I've, I've been like a Pokemon uh, person. I, I, I've been super into Pokemon my entire life. So uh, for me, it's um, Pokemon's been following me forever. Uh, and when PvP came out, I just I just made my mind up that this was something I was going to master. And it's t- taken some years, but uh, here I am, and uh, and uh, I'm doing quite well. So why didn't you actually like stick to VGC, right? Because that's what Pokemon Showdown is. Is, is VGC not your competitive thing? Uh, I really like it and i devour vgc content and maybe that's a stretch but i i enjoy vgc content a lot um but i've it's just too much of a a time drain to actually like get the pokemon uh maybe that sounds dumb as like pokemon go is also like very resource heavy uh Mm -hmm. but like you need a lot of resources to be able to compete, but with Pokemon Go, I was I was in from the beginning. Like I I didn't start like from 
I didn't come from far behind uh, like you would like in VGC. So because I didn't realize that I wanted to do well at Pokemon uh, until like in my mid twenties, I guess. Uh, and then Pokemon Go was just I was playing it and PvP came out and I also had this feeling that you know what this is my Pokemon. I've been walking around catching them and like as a kid, I wanted my own Pokemon. I wanted to go out and 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 beat everyone else <laughs> with my own Pokemon. So it's that kind of like uh, ownership of of the Pokemon that I actually use, which uh, which I really really enjoy. While in BGC, you're getting a new game every year, so it's I I don't like feel connected to it in the same way. Interesting. So do you think that the pacing of Pokemon Go is actually good? Because I think there's a lot of complaints from people there as well. Like, oh, they're not releasing Pokemon often enough or, you know, like, oh, they're not updating things often enough. But the way you're making it sound is they're doing it too often in the other games. Uh, I feel like the way they're doing it in the other games makes it so your connection to the Pokemon isn't as strong because... Uh, po- Pokemon Go is made la- as a forever game, while uh, the Pokemon, the main series games, uh, you you'll play it for a year, maybe maybe three, but after after that, when the new generation drops, you're onto the new generation because that's mm. like how the competitive scene works. And for me, that's uh, just less personal because like uh, the Toxicroak that I've been using for. Uh, ever is the Toxic Rogue that I first built for Nightmare Cup uh, back in like May 2019 and I've been using it so much uh, it's it's a 13 attack uh, but uh, uh, it wins CMP against all other Toxic Rogues and the way I like <laughs> to play, play Toxic Rogue is winning CMPs and um, uh, I also know that my Toxic Rogue has a better chance at farming down Shadow Swampert in the twos than high rank Toxic Rogues. So that is it's like stuff like that. It's just <clears throat> I'm connected to this Toxic Rogue now. While if you play the remakes of Diamond and Pearl, you're not trading like your old Toxic Rogue into the new game. So yeah, I, I feel like I feel more connected to Pokemon Go. Yeah, I can tell if you know exactly from which year, which month that specific Toxicroak still is. Yeah, that, that must be a, a partner Pokemon, right? <laughs> if yeah, I should call it, like that. It, it kind of is. Toxicroak is also what got me to uh, uh, my first legend, first time I made legend. Same. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it was? Yeah, 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 in Ultra League. Oh, well, screw Ultra League. Anyway, uh, I am... I'm not uh, impressed. Yeah, uh, Almost got, had him. Yeah, I got it in Great League um, with Shadow Lapras and Galarian Stumpfisk. So I got it with Shadow Lapras, Toxicroak, and Snorlax in Ultra yeah, League. It's an amazing team. Like, like, obviously, as you can tell... I hate that team. Like, that team... Just owned my Gengar the whole time. It was so much. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. I'm so sorry. Uh, no, but um, yeah, I've like my favorite po- Pokemon has been Lapras for years, but uh, I'm I'm also really connected to Toxic Rogue, to be honest. So uh, those, I guess, those two are still on my on my list of uh, very very uh, cool Pokemon to use, to put it that way. Yeah, speaking of Lapras, uh, I don't want to. They they say this in Flemish. I don't know if they say it in in Dutch, Martin. But uh, digging dead cows out of ditches. Do you have this saying? Yeah, yeah, but, we, uh, we 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 have something like that. We don't use it. Uh, it's like outdated. But I guess mm-hmm. Belgians. Uh... Yeah, they're way behind everything, right? <laughs> you can tell by the language. They, <laughs> no, they speak but, like medieval. But... So uh, okay, I, well, I, I don't, I don't want to bring up an, a sore subject, but speaking no. of Lapras, the mm-hmm. first time that you made a day two qualification in the Pokemon Go Championship Series was in 2022. And I believe you had a Lapras on your team, but you couldn't use it in, uh, in the not tournament, entirely correct? correct? Not entirely correct. I did have a Lapras. Uh and I used it. I could use it, uh, but I also had a toxic croak that I misregistered. Oh, okay. Uh, the to- no, no, wait, wait. I said Toxapex. It was Toxapex, no? Was that Leo? Yeah, 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 I remember. Okay, I remember. yeah. Yeah, I, I 
put in the CP of the rank one because that's what I've been simulating on on PV Poke. Uh, so my my head is just oh yeah, it's forty nine and seven, but mine is the rank three. So I have a different CP, but it's like basically the same. So I just never bother checking it, and my mind just oh yeah, I know I know these IVs, I know these stats. So uh, I I made a mistake, and I weren't allowed to use it again in my. Uh, losers round three against uh, losers round two against Tho uh, Tactical, um, mm. so I lost to him. Yeah, I've never heard of him. What is he like? Uh, I don't know. So it comes off as uh, really no, he's a super super. <laughs> um, uh, and um, yep, uh, he uh, brought Venus or Medicham and Lickitung all games, and Tho Toxapex would have been really nice to have, man. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, so we played some RPS games with Obstagoon instead, and I lost. But um, yeah, so Lapras, Lapras has been, uh, I, th I think Lapras was the best Pokemon in Great League until Jellicent became a thing, and then Jellicent stopped being a thing again, and then Lapras was just back to being the best Pokemon in my opinion. This was before Wall Rain and before Dugong got Drill Run. Uh, and Lapras, like all the seals, usually have a lot of play uh, in almost every meta. So I, I've really liked playing them because uh, there are always ways to turn a bad situation around. I even played, I remember a Sylph Cup uh, that I played Shadow Lapras with Ice Beam because on a switch, uh, you can switch Lapras and you can beat Medicham with Psychic with if you land the Ice Beam in the One Shield. So uh, I didn't get the chance of using it ever of actually landing the Ice Beam and flipping Switch. But uh, I've I've looked into a lot of Lapras matchups and I really enjoy that Pokemon. So hereby, I dare you to now win a regional Ooh. championship with Lapras. Yeah. Do you think you can do that? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah, of course. It's easy. Why not? Uh, easy, yeah. Let's do it again. Uh, just uh, just use it instead of a bonus now this time and uh, not not run it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's sad to say, but I didn't I didn't run a bonus now a lot in my day two. Oh, well, I against the uh, for the fourth and sixth place finish, I did I did bring it, but it was not my win cons to put it that way. I uh, so uh, I feel like I could definitely make Lapras work. I'm I'm sh I'm sure of it, especially now that Medicham is gone and uh, Lantern usage is so low. I really feel like uh, Lapras mm -hmm. can can yeah can work again. Unless Polyrath, right? Yeah, Polyrath like it, it that that is the absolute worst <laughs> for Lapras. Uh, so, but um. Uh, water damage when water damage becomes like slightly better again like against Talonflame uh, if Talonflame starts becoming a thing I think Lapras is better than Dugong but like as a generalist I would say Dugong is better because of the Icy Wind debuffs but I gotta ask so if you're gonna use Lapras are you gonna use the Ice Beam or would you use Skull Bash and Surf? Skull Bash for sure because you want uh Ice and water has amazing synergy, but you can't hit other water types. So right. Skull Bash is just uh, for neutral matchups like Umbrian and uh, for water type matchups like Azumarill, you need the Skull Bash. Uh, and against Umbrian, if you guys, like if anyone needs to needs to know this to beat Umbrians with Lapras, just go straight for the Skull Bash and uh, twice, and then you, you tank the final move to get to your surf. You always win. Shields or no shields? That's good to know. I yep. uh, Perhaps in the next meta. Oh, Lapras yeah. Oh, yeah. Perhaps. I've made my mind up. I'm going to Utrecht. Yes! Very All right, good. good. I'm, good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Are, are you yeah. uh, coming off? Are you going to uh, do, pa, what's it called, Padel with Colin as well? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'll definitely, I'll definitely text Colin so we can do paddle there because I don't know if like for the ones who's not aware, paddle is like tennis, tennis for dummies. 
Uh, <laughs> if, if, oh, if, if Pen is within like a glass cage and you can use the wall so the ball bounces, bounces off the wall. And uh, it's it's a lot of fun. And I um, apparently call him place uh, as well. So I'll, I'll, I'll text him and see if he's down to play. I got to beat him there as well, don't I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was hanging up an alert. It says participant inadequance is having a problem. Oh, well, yeah, I saw my <laughs> camera flicking. I don't know what that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is it a problem you want to talk about, Martin? <laughs> I feel outclassed here. And we'll yeah, it looks up. fine. Everything on oh, yeah. my side. You're looking yeah. fine. Trust me. <laughs> you're, you're fine, dude. Super fine. We we don't put that in there as well, right? Oh, no, we're keeping all of this. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, you need some chit chat. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, kind of going off of that, we talked a little bit about your Lille season or your Lille top cut. How did you do in the seasons before this season? You know, we'll, we'll kind of build up to to this year. Uh, I've been doing like okay. I feel in the seasons before this one, uh, I f like my first top cut was Lille. I did not do. I did. I only did a single tournament in the 2022 season, uh, but in the 2023 season, I had three top cuts. In, uh, I believe it was three. I had a sixth place in Lille, and I had a fourth place in Bochum. But maybe that was a that was it actually. Was yeah, I believe Malmo? that was it. No, Malmo. I went. Uh, one and two it was like oh, well, we don't talk about that Skip. yeah thanks for reminding me <laughs> uh, but uh, uh so 2023 20, season was like pretty good and uh but at the same time in in lil i did very well i beat a lot of like good players and i played very well in my opinion uh but in bochum i faced a lot of like TCG dads who came to support their their kids, so that was not a very good tournament for me. I because I felt like I was supposed to win, <laughs> and then when I faced, I I did uh, have a convincing win against um, Mount Spang, but then I faced Lurgan Lug Lug and Rocket and lost, and then I faced I fa did beat Talonflow, but I uh, also lost to EJ. Uh, 23 EJB. Oh, so, so you lost to the champion and the runner up. Yeah, which like in hindsight, and when you put it like that, it's not it, it it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But like I felt like I'm at a level where uh okay, I, I'm expected to win against Mautopeng, but I'm not expected to win to win against Lurgan Rocket. And I've not been able to like uh, overcome those hurdles or like make those upsets. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, no, I know exactly what you're saying. Do you yeah. think that partially this is also in your head though? Do you think at some points people are like, oh, like they're, they're using you as this standard? Like I, uh, I know that I can beat X person, but yeah, obviously I'm not going to win against Arceus Aurelius. Uh, Maybe, Maybe yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like uh, I'm, I'm sure other players do that as well. Like everyone does that for sure. Uh, but I'm, but for me though, how I felt is that okay. I, I have, I, I have an idea of like player, players who are better than me, and I struggle beating them if I mm -hmm. believe that they are, they are better than me, and that's. That's been a very tough hill to climb to to stop thinking about it that way, but I feel like I've taken massive steps uh, about that and not thinking about it as like a constant skill of uh, how good you are at Pokemon, but more of a uh, floating um, kind of uh, dingus uh, where uh, where like. On your day, you can beat anyone, and I've I've I kind of realized that when I've I've, I've played its accent two two times in GBL, and I've never lost, and so uh, it's like I I know. Does it's, that make you uh, the world champion, though? I think I think it actually does. <laughs> I think it does. So no, yeah, uh, but it it's it's been a struggle, and I I felt like in season twenty twenty three I did as 
how I expected of myself, but I never surpassed like those expect- expectations. Hmm. So um, it was a very fun season, but I wanted to take it further, to put it that way. I, of course, I wanted to compete at Worlds, didn't man- manage to. And it was like a slight disappointment um, because I really wanted to. But at the same time, I felt like maybe you're not ready. And uh, that has changed this season, I guess. Yeah. How does it feel to be qualified now for Worlds? You know what? I It's absolutely insane. Uh, the feeling I had after I qualified for Worlds was just such relief. It, it was it was a feeling of, you know what? I can do this. Uh, like in whatever situation I am, I, I, I will be able to find a way out. This is a game and I'm here to have fun and I do want to have fun. And that's, that's just, it, my mindset changed after I qualified for roles. It, I, I can't even lie. It's, it's, it's just how it is. It's, it's an incredible feeling. So yeah, I, I believe it, it's kind of like uh, confirmed for me that I am a really good player in a way. No, that makes sense. Um, we're skipping a little bit ahead, but if, if we want to talk about this already, can you explain to everyone, because you've been talking a lot about plot armor. And for oh, yeah? people who maybe aren't uh, playing much uh, video games or don't really understand what you're meaning by this, can you give some examples of why you thought you had plot armor in Dortmund? Okay, so uh, I haven't looked up like the definition, but plot armor is basically what happens when a character in a TV show or a book or a movie or whatever uh, is uh, is crucial to the plot, like to the storyline of the show. Uh, so it like they don't die in situations where they should die. <laughs> and for example, against Nessa Beethan, I didn't oh. play like in day two. I didn't play a great set in my opinion, but he mistapped on the swap timer. And when he he realized he did not want to swap anymore, but he had already queued the swap because he pressed on the side uh, of the swap. And then, oh shit, yeah. And then he and then he pressed the queued the swap. So he the only loose con he had was doing exactly what he did, and he didn't intend to. So um, I should have died right there. <laughs> and also in the finals against Colin in game four in in the in like our first set, uh, he throws. Uh, fly instead of flame charge into my registeel when he definitely like he should just flame charge uh but he made that mistake and that's my plot armor for for this tournament and i felt like i've given people plot armor before so this was my time to get it but uh, i get at the same time i i just don't want i don't want to be in situations where i need plot armor ever again you know what i always say right the person who makes the least mistakes wins the tournament. Yeah. So even though these kind of things happen, that's sometimes how tournaments are won, right? Sometimes yeah. you need a little bit of luck, and for the rest of it, you just need to play well. That is true. That is actually true. And I I played really well, in my opinion. I, they're like the best part of my game was realizing what my opponents could or could not do and how they would approach the game. So I could have a battle plan that was so strong that even if I didn't like execute it perfectly, I would have such a strong advantage just because I, I my plan going into the game was very good. Because um, I'm... When I'm on stage, I really struggle keeping track of energy. Like against Cash Tom, I had no idea how much energy his wish cash had. Wish cash had. But uh, I just swapped him through the play rough, and he wasted like ninety energy. And uh, against Colin, uh, I uh, when he threw the fly into my registeel, 
I didn't know how much energy he had. If he had 100 energy or if he had 50, I had no idea. I just knew he'd done some incinerates and that was it, basically. So I, I, I just lose track because it's so much to take in. So, yeah. Okay, you know what? But in in those situations, I I I I knew I knew. Uh, like uh, I with Mike Roselli against West Cash, yeah. And I I usually do that, and it's like it doesn't even matter if I get debuffed or not because it's always gonna take two grass knots. So I don't I don't care about debuffs in that in that situation. He can debuff me as much as he wants. I'm gonna stay. Uh, people who are less familiar with Crest maybe would have swapped out to clear the debuffs. It's but it, it there is no reason to. You need all you always need two grass knots. So um, uh, but in those like that matchup, I'm pretty comfortable. But um, when situations get sticky after a lot of swapping and you go back and forth, then uh, it's it's tough to keep track when there's so much going on when you're playing the game. The way I saw your battles, I felt like you always already were prepared for what you were going to bring against that kind of specific team. So, like, what I mean is, like, when I brought, like, I also brought Teleflame and a Bomber Snow team to Liverpool. I sucked, but let's not talk about that. But I practiced a lot against teams like that of Abinov, right, which was very popular right then. And against those kind of teams, when you face them again, you just know exactly what to do. Is that something you also had there? That Like, did you have practice with, like, with like uh, friends uh, or your faction, uh... um, we had more theory crafting than actual scrimming against uh, each other. Uh, I scrim more against people that I'm not familiar with to not like be pre uh, be prepared for a specific play style or get used to playing this type of player and then be surprised when someone else comes in and plays it differently. So, um, but we have a lot of theory crafting uh, in my group that uh, about how to play out specific matchups and um, that, that I, I managed to remember even though I don't necessarily have played it out. So, uh, but but um, it's it's a lot of work going into matchups. Uh, like against Cashton, uh, he had a similar team to Nighttime Clash who won Liverpool. I think they had the exact same team. Yes, and right. it's a very similar team to the team to Doombug who won Knoxville as well. Uh, he just had Charger Bug instead of Dugong, and we talked a lot about how to approach that match because. How can you break Skarmory Whiskash consistently? Uh, why, like, yeah, it, it's like almost impossible. Uh, Azumarill has a decent matchup into both. I, so I think I it's thought, only okay. really Polyrath, but Polyrath is yeah. like so difficult to play nowadays. Yeah, I don't like playing Polyrath right now. Um, Sh Shadow Polyrath might even lose the zero to one shield against Annihilate or one one to zero. I mean, it's it's just. Not a Pokemon I'm willing to play. Yeah, regular anymore. does. Shadow uh, Sh Shadow actually wins once if it goes straight to Shadow Ball. Polyrath's actually not bad, though. Uh, Polyrath is not... Like, Polyrath is decent. I, I, Polyrath has a lot of good matchups, but it's just so bad into Annihilate. And also, Charger Bug is really common. So, um, it's not a risk I'm willing to take. If, if I were to play Polyrath, or if I were to play Annihilate, I would never bring it, either of them, into another a, a team with another annihilate because I it's just so uncomfortable playing against the other. Uh, so I kind of would have to build my team in a way that I wouldn't have to rely on either Polyrath or Annihilate for any specific matchup. And then why bring it? That that that's just how I approach the game. But at the same time, a lowland sand slash exists, so you do need a fighting or a fire type. So, uh, and I prefer Talonflame. So let's kind of dig into this. You, I mean, for those who know of you, they know that you like to theory craft. You've helped a lot with 
uh, building metas for like some of the grassroots tournaments as well. And yeah, you, you sit and like to talk about the different Pokemon matchups and what goes well together. Do you build your team like by yourself and then get kind of feedback from your teammates or is it kind of like a pick and choose together sort of deal or, or, or what are you even looking for when you're building that team of six? Uh, I'm, I've always built my own teams uh, until uh, Liverpool and Dortmund, uh, which is a blow to my team building skills. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but I was onto I was onto the Abom Snow Talonflame core uh, by myself. But I I didn't like to play Reggie Steel. I've never really liked to play Reggie. So I've I've never put Reggie on my team, but it turned out that Reggie was exactly what that team needed. So I, I was running Claude Sire instead of Reggie, which hmm. is just not great in a meta with a lot of Skarmory and Whiskash. So uh, um, I needed the help to overcome the hurdle of just, okay, put the Reggie still on the team and build it from there. And then I could... Uh, Fill the team with um, uh, like the rest of the of the team were filled with Pokemon that I really enjoyed to play. So and then I just had to bear with Reggie. And uh, to be honest, Reggie was incredible in the grand finals against Colin because it denied him so many ABA lines. He he didn't because of Reggie. He did not have any safe or soft ABAs. And what I mean by that is if, especially because he has such a high rank like it done, it, it's so bad into my rage steal. So he can't have like in the front and a bone snow in the back if I lead the Reggie, uh, because then he just automatically loses the game. So he had to play A, B, B teams always into me. He had to play a lot of safe teams. And that gave me so much freedom to play the teams that I wanted to play. So um, Reggie was really good for me there, but I needed help to or- overcome um, that, that specific hurdle. So um, I, but I really like to theory craft and I really like to look into how to build a team. What do you need for a team to be well-rounded and how, how do, you, do you approach uh, the meta that you have right in front of you? Like what's, what's common to play? So I was uh, I was scared to face Kashton because he had the team that I thought this is going to be somewhat of an RPS matchup because of uh, I because I don't have like a clear core breaker to the entire team, but um, turned out okay because I RPS him I guess <laughs> somewhat. It was RPS, but you just won. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and I loved when people were running Annihilate into me because I was very often triple, triple strong, strong into, into the Annihilate. Annihilate so. Especially in the grand finals, yeah. Yeah. Um, don't give it any room because it's going to ruin your life. Annihilate is incredibly strong, uh, but I don't like playing incredibly strong Pokemon, apparently. <laughs> No, yeah, it's like uh, it's Chris a... Reggie are bad indeed, yeah. Yeah, Chris Reggie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No bullshit <laughs> whatsoever. Never, mm. never even heard three, of it. Three Pokemon with 2400 stat products? <laughs> mm. <laughs> <Not really. laughs> yeah, Chris Reggie and Azu, uh, I guess incredibly boring Pokemon to do well with. Uh, but uh, If you win a tournament, who cares? No? Yeah, I don't give a flying... Uh, I, I I don't give I don't give a damn. You don't give a fish, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, so I, I I'm very happy with the team, but that was not my creation alone. Uh, I was on I was on to parts of it, but um, but um, it was finished by someone else, and then I just stole that team. Um, but yeah, I I really enjoy the theory crafting, and I really enjoy like. Uh, g- digging deep into how you can approach these kinds of things and how how uh, to find the best strategies. What what I'm I'm more of a visionary in a way. I'm I I don't think I can iron out all the details to make it perfect, but I have an idea of what is good and how I want to approach this entire thing that we have here. So. 
I I come up with a lot of ideas. Some are not the best, but some are really good. And but and then I get a help with like finishing it up, I guess. Um, doing it all by yourself is often not the best idea, I believe. All right. Um, what are your goals for the remainder of the season and the next season? Um, You're still going I, to the UIC as well, right? Yeah. You have I'm to defend to... Uh, against the Americans with us. Uh, yes, yes. That's all That's all we yeah. care about. Amer- right? yeah. Americans are the worst. Am I right, guys? Am I yeah. right? <laughs> You're, you are absolutely right, Amanda. Uh, so I'm going to... Um, all the European tournaments uh, that's left, as, except for Bologna, probably. Oh. But I do have uh, a slight... I have a dream of uh, trying to cast um, a, a tournament sometime. Uh, I don't know if it will actually be possible, but it, I, I think it would be really fun. And... Um, I've tried to be on my best behavior when I've been <laughs> interviewed uh, to to actually like have a chance, but I don't know. I'm 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 t- a bit. Uh, I struggle being aware enough of myself uh, to what's smart and how to like be s- strategic about how to uh, improve my chances of actually getting to cast. But um, it's a dream I have, so uh, that's that's something i'd love to try out i try out at least uh and it would be nice for europe to actually have a regional winner as a caster am i right martin yes yes uh it won't take longer i promise (laughs) okay (laughs) no but um my goals for the rest of the season is uh, i'll try to aim for the travel award because uh, it's uh, a lot it's so much cheaper traveling around to tournaments and tournaments in europe than traveling to Hawaii. So um I'll 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 try to go for it. Well now that I got a lot of points in my last tournament, I'm I'm at uh like I, I do have a shot. So um we'll see how it goes. Yeah you're uh, like almost at five hundred now, wouldn't you be? Yeah four hundred and eighty seven should yeah. should be right. So I believe I'm like top six maybe. Uh, and top eight gets the uh, gets the travel award, but uh, I know players like Status Dan, Tonton Batus, uh, other like Stone Collection is right or, or hovering right around like somewhat in the same area. Look, if anything, I will make sure Stat Stan does not get many local points. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's all I can ask for, dude. <laughs> Uh, but we uh, and we have some Norwegian players that are trying to de- deny me the local points as well. And uh, I'm I I mean people might be surprised by how strong the Norwegian community is uh, because none no other player is actually like going to any regional tournaments than me almost. So but it like going to a tournament in Oslo, you might walk around you might walk out with. Uh, I, with three losses it's um sometimes it just doesn't go your way and um it it's not happened to me yet but it's been on the i've been on the brink of defeat so many times and getting getting wins in norway is way tougher than you'd expect yeah i think that's true with a lot of players in general especially if you know, you were saying before, oh, I expected that I was better than this person, but I think I'm not as good as this person. A lot of times, if you don't even know a person's name, you maybe even get a little bit cocky or too self-assured. Yeah. And like, I don't even need to really think too hard. And, you know, it's like, you know, where you're playing GBL against when you're in like the, you know, 2200 ELO, you're like, they're not counting. They're not going to try to catch. I don't need a way yeah. to turn. And then you're like, oh no, someone else is also tanking. Like, or, <laughs> or, or maybe they just started the season late or something. They, they have some yeah. big skills. I, I wasn't expecting it uh, quite at this level, but I, I do think that's true. A lot of times you, you have a player that you're like, oh, I've never heard of this name before. Clearly if they were like someone I needed to be worried about, I, I would have at least seen their name in, in passing. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you're you'd be surprised by the quality of of uh, players that are around now. And in my opinion, especially in Europe, because I feel like in in regionals, 
and Europe, everyone can attend basically all the tournaments because they're like hosted in Germany and the like ne- like countries lying basically around it. Uh, there are two tournaments in Germany and then uh, England, France, uh, Netherlands, uh, Poland have like... I hear no Belgium. In- I hear no Belgium. Uh, yeah, I, there are no reason to go to Belgium, my eyes there. No, I don't think so. But and that's like eighty percent of the tournaments, and then you have one in Spain and one in Italy, and that's it. I guess Sweden, but it's very close. Anyway, so for us in that this part of Europe, it's very easy to go to all all the tournaments, and uh, that makes basically every tournament incredibly stacked. And but uh, that also makes it incredibly worse when the American comes over and wins this super stacked biggest European tournament that we've yeah, ever we're, had. We're just not used to that play style, in like against Lurgan, like Rocket. three times week two, Reggie, three times, week two <laughs> three Reggie. times, three times, and he just doesn't bring the Reggie uh, because, uh, because, in my opinion, Lurgan Rocket sometimes overestimates his opponents and I that so. he did against nighttime clasher when you have players that you are not confident will not take those risks shove it shove the reggie down their throat <laughs> that's that's what i do uh, against uh tonton I wasn't sure he was not going to be ABA to Reggie. So in game two, with Dugong in the front and Lickitung in the back, I shoved him the Reggie. <laughs> and it worked out. So, um, so yeah. Uh, Nighttime Clasher, uh, cover the ABAs and uh, you'll be okay. Yeah. Did, did uh, Lurgan tell you uh, what he did after he beat Nighttime? They played again in uh, in Dormu, right? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, did he tell yeah, you how he that went? Yeah, he picked him out of the tournament. Yeah, yeah. He told me that he uh, he he won the game. Then he uh, threw the grass knot on his Charizard, uh, got the shield, and one HP KO'd him through the shield. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, that was that was fun. That was really fun. Lurgan said that um, nighttime clasher wasn't even going to shield, but Lurgan said no, no. Please please shield this. <laughs> Just so the the shield, so it would have the. <laughs> The KO through uh, the shield. He's hilarious. So yeah, that's a fun fact for trainers who maybe don't know. I think most people know by this stage, but even when the shield comes up, one HP damage still goes through. So if you only have one HP left, you are still going to be knocked out. Are you on stage right now, Amanda? I just feel letting like people know. You know, people points. people are listening in. They might not know this if they're just maybe they're just tuning in to hear the soothing voice of the, this Norwegian Viking oh. warrior. Stop yeah. So, so, a personal question for me: Which name do you like more, the number one European hype man or the Viking warrior? Uh, I, I think I preferred the Viking warrior to be honest. Uh, but I, I'm gonna take the hype man of Europe as well. I mean, <laughs> if you have nicknames for me, just bring them. I mean, no, we did. We came up with what was it, the pickle pickle mix spice or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for context, I was streaming yesterday. I did, didn't know. Apparently, uh, there's something called relish. Oh but yeah. In, but in Norwegian, it's called cucumber mix, uh, like directly translated. So I just went for something that I assumed was correct. But apparently, relish. Uh, Delicious. Is, is, yeah. Americans lose their minds when <laughs> some 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 of the food they know is just named differently. They lose their minds. Trust me. Yeah, Amanda's like, not the only one. <laughs> no, and uh, like I had no idea Hot Pocket actually was food. Oh, yeah, 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 it's a brand. It's a brand. Yeah. <laughs> how am I supposed to know? Like, how, right? What are these references that I'm not taking? Are you expecting me to take them? Well, I'll tell you about Smalahove. It's <laughs> yeah, oh, I, tell I love Smalahove. It's a, <laughs> it's the hoviest of the smaller. It's a, it's like a a ball, right? No, it's the head oh. of a sheep. Damn. <laughs> I was uh, I was uh, guessing uh, cuz it sounded kind of like smotobolen which is also a okay a, a, no uh, did you say the head of a this... sheep the head of a sheep yeah it's is, the head is, of a do sheep. you eat that yeah 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 absolutely uh, that's why you grew so big and strong <laughs> i've never had it but oh. uh Yet. but uh, it is like a, a very traditional dish in norway where i i i'm not sure if they 
cook or boil the entire sheep's head uh, and you eat the eyes and the brains and the tongue and whatever. Yeah. Apparently, I, the eyes are like this. But, uh... This is a great topic. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> Um, something, exactly. something non Pokemon related. I heard you were on a reality show before. Yeah, I've been on a reality show in Norway. <laughs> it's uh, how did that go? Uh, well, it went pretty bad to be honest. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, but I actually got in though. There, it's like five thousand applicants every year, and I was one of like twenty people who were elected, and. Uh, it's a long process. You have like three interviews before before you you uh, get picked, and um, it was like a trash dating show, like X on the Beach, right? Exactly, this type it's of thing. the Norwegian yeah. equivalent of X on the Beach or a Love Island or something like that. <laughs> it's it's a competition <laughs> where you make relationships basically to try to win money in the end. <laughs> so uh, I was. Uh, there was a friend of mine who applied for me. I had no idea about that. So when I got the call, uh, then I was, uh, no, I, what? And then, and I hung up and then I thought, why am I not going on this interview, by the way? So I went, just went on the interview and, uh, I felt I, immediately when I, uh, it was a group interview. And immediately when I got there, I felt like, oh yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be casted <laughs> if I want to, uh, and it was just so weird because I have uh, I have an ability to take a room if I need to like socially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, because I talk a lot and I talk loudly, <laughs> and I'm and you're I, like three times taller than a majority of people in a room. It, Maybe that's yeah. not true in Norway. <laughs> uh, mm, no, I am tall in Norway as well. <laughs> And but uh, so yeah, I um, I got it though. So I I got landed the show and I went there and I were there for two weeks, which are like two game rounds in the total of twelve. So it was not like such a long participation, but uh, it was really good. I had a lot of fun and it changed my life. I'm gonna tell you because. Even though it's just like two weeks on TV, you become instant celebrity. I've never been uh, bought so many drinks on, on bars or had like it, it's never been easier to to uh, pick up girls. Uh, like uh, girls are oh, okay. I'm, I'm gonna be a bit careful, but some girls think it's very interesting when you've be, been on TV. So uh, it's um, it, it was a lot of fun. It was a very fun period of my life. But uh, and you're like, and that's, that's how I met my fiance. <laughs> yeah, she did not want to go on a date me a day with me because of that show. <laughs> so I told her, "Wow, you're extremely judgmental." And she said, "No, I'm not judgmental." Then go on a date day with me. So I basically blackmailed her into going on a date. And she did, and now we're now we're engaged. So uh, I, uh, I'm not saying blackmail girls, but uh, <laughs> st- strong arming them a little bit. It might not be the worst idea. Get on a no. TV show or strong arm them into relationships. These are <laughs> yeah. tips for dating whichever, from Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> whichever you prefer. No, uh, I worked incredibly hard uh, to get my fian- fiance interested, uh, in spite of. Uh, that reality TV show, but um, and it paid off. Work, a uh, hard work usually does. So um, that's um, that's basically a, a, that story. And it was incredibly fun. You get invited to like these events, and you're paid or get free drinks to show up. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. But uh, at the same time, you're kind of like. St- taking a risk with your integrity and people are sure. also people do get like an opinion of you uh that's maybe not like rooted in reality at all which might be frustrating but it's um it, for me i didn't have like a real problem with that i'm not too concerned about other people's opinion of me as long as i feel like i can stand for the impression that i have of myself and i'm trying to be humble i'm trying to be nice i'm trying to be generous 
And as long as I feel like I'm acknowledging that whenever I see interviews I've done or uh, ways I interact with other people, like, uh, and, and the way people interact with me, I feel like I managed to. And then I don't have a problem with some people potentially have a problem with me. You know, you should just tell them, because they don't know, right, that you're a Pokemon champion. And then yeah. that changes their opinion. <laughs> yeah. Right? You can just wear the, I see you already wear the medal. Do you wear that to, to work as well uh, today? I considered wearing it for work. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, all the people I'm working with are like 40 and above. And they think it's super cool that I travel Europe around to go to Pokemon tournaments. <laughs> uh so uh so yeah it's um i'm having a great time but at the same time it feels like i'm living a double life you know because uh with you guys i'm a pokemon master and with these other people they they have no idea who i am I, to them i'm just yeah. a regular guy you know yeah no but it's um i i i i really uh I, i'm just trying to be it as best of a guy as i can be and then we'll take it it's not really on the subject of this, but what you just said reminded me when I saw you, uh, I think it was in Malmo probably last year, we had this conversation because of course, you know, when there's a big group of people, it's not that you know everyone. And so sometimes if you're talking with someone, you don't want to be like, oh, because especially if they know who you are, you don't want to act like you don't know them. And so I had asked you one time, I was like, hey, do you know who this person is? And you're like, no, but you know what you do? You just act like you know them, and sooner or later, someone's gonna say their name. <laughs> and then, yeah. uh, and I was like, I've been thinking about that ever since. And you're like, this is what guys do all the time. Guys will hang out for like four days and not know the other person's name until <laughs> yeah. one person just randomly happens to say it. I'm like, I'm gonna check on this, but then I never did. So, Martine, is this true? Is this a guy thing? Like, if you don't know who someone is, will you just kind of act like you do until somehow it gets put into your your aura? <laughs> Yeah, I added last Sunday. Oh yeah, still yeah, don't probably. still don't know the name actually. <laughs> <laughs> but they were cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then you went wait to someone for someone to go, "Hey, Jonathan," or something like that. And oh yeah, yeah okay, or that or or uh, or we just say bye and uh, we meet at the yeah. next event, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean sometimes it's just you got to roll with it, like. Uh, I, I don't want to come off as a dick, so I'm not going to, or arrogant. So, uh, I, if someone's talking to me, I'll, I'll, I'll give them like what I have, but, uh, I'm, I'm not able to remember all the names or the faces that I've encountered. And sadly, I'll, I'll, I'll admit when like you, I'm not going to say like you, you i'm not gonna speak of myself like as a celebrity but at some but point, I, I was on a reality dating show guys exactly <laughs> at, at, for like a month in norway i was an a-list celebrity it was <laughs> one month but that was enough it's like you meet so many people it's insane uh one guy that i ended up living with i greeted him three times before I could remember seeing, like meeting him. But it's like, you go around, it's shaking hands. That's mm -hmm. that's basically what you do whenever you're outside of your house every day. Like oh, Martin, nice. I'm, I'm sure you're partly familiar. Maybe, I, probably you too, Amanda, because Pokemon players are coming up to you because they know your face from the broadcast or from YouTube videos or uh, from, from some something Pokemon related because you're in like uh, your your faces of the community in a way, mm -hmm. and people comes up to you, people come up to you and uh, talk to you like they know you, but you have no idea who they are. Uh, but you still want to be nice, so you strike a conversation and then you don't really think more of it. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. But I... when you're with friends and there's a guy you have met twice before and you should remember his name you're not gonna say it yeah <laughs> hey dude yeah just gotta fake that until you make it yeah or until someone else makes it for you eventually eventually someone's gonna say their yeah. name <laughs> well i had one person being even more direct with me and actually asking me straight up do you still remember my name oh that is very direct i didn't 
I don't know what I remember. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, yeah. I remember his face so clearly, I, and I knew he was going to be there too. I just couldn't think. They, like you say, there's so many people sometimes, right? Especially a Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. That's just. Yeah, uh, that it is. Nice. And I I do want to remember everyone, but it's it's uh, it's impossible at times. But, uh, and I'm sorry if I offend anyone saying this, but it's just sometimes you just meet too many people. And for outgoing people like myself, I meet a lot of people and speak to a lot of people. And I'm sure you guys are uh, the same. So I'm sure you know um, how it is. If you get like something like shirts or jersey with snow overtaps sometime, could you put the Viking warrior on the back for me? <laughs> I'll uh, I'll consider it. I'll definitely consider it. But... You know, it's it started because they someone said in the chat that what did they they called the, him the like Nordic the, Goth, the but, Nordic but, god. But I don't like, think yeah, I could really say, say that on the cast. Yeah. I, so I, then I I, I said yeah yeah we should do like with a Viking or something and so. It's true. And, it then, was, uh, and then I stole He had it. a really clever thing. Yeah. The, yeah. the final boss versus the Viking warrior. No, I liked it a lot. It was like built up a you good storyline. It was such a good branding of that final. The final <laughs> boss, I guess the Viking warrior. I mean, who doesn't think that's cool? I know. And right? I got to say, Colin's nickname, the final boss. It fits that him, shit right? goes hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it fits as well. Holy crap. Yeah. You guys yeah, also just have such like stark different personality. Like he's always like very, you, you can never read him really. Like he's very calm and collected when he's playing. And it's like, you can tell there's a lot of calculating, but not a lot going on. I'm sure he plays poker or something too. And meanwhile, <laughs> every single thing that you're doing is written on your face for the most part. And like, like when you recognize when you swapped in the Azumarill to the um, Annihilate and you're like, when you knew it was Talonflame in the back, you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, I realized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it it took me a couple of seconds, uh, but I realized, and then I thought, oh, why did you do all this? But yeah, it's uh, and then you just have to re yeah readjust. But uh, yeah, that's how I am, and that's the different. That those are the differences between me and Colin. Like I I, I saw some people in chat making uh, cracking jokes, saying, oh the. The one with the red beard is gonna win because <laughs> the filter makes both our beards red. They're color correcting, and uh, so yeah, I like I guess we can seem similar from a distance, but on stage uh, we're pretty different. Yeah, I'd say, but I'm not sure if I haven't seen that many players maybe as animated as I am. Uh, there are a couple for sure, but uh, Martine's pretty. You Martine's pretty animated as well. Yeah, I yeah. Say. You get you guys oh. are probably two of our most animated in in Europe. Yeah, I saw I saw I make faces. Dial Up Churn as well was very, mm -hmm. but he's not yeah. European though. Yeah. Who who are you saying, Martine? Zephima sticks. He's like showing some. He whenever he recognizes play, he does like this. Yeah. Or like yeah. What yeah, do you true. think yeah. of uh, what do you think of Goes a Beast? I don't even know who that is. Oh, I've heard the name, but I I don't know. Yeah, he played on a stream against Mama Clans. I remember, he was also very animated. I don't know. I think I uh, I'm definitely okay. up there. Yeah, can't wait for my turn yeah. to win. Then I can do, also like do you, do you hype guys, and jump. Like, is it really just purely personality, or is it like slightly the fact that you guys are good enough that you can do? Because I I imagine for a lot of players. You have to take a lot of concentration, obviously, if you're trying to keep track of counts, if you're trying to do this, and then to have an opponent like really get in your head a bit with, you know, how how lighthearted they almost seem to take it. Or like, you know, with Dex or Tragi Comics, when they're mm -hmm. just like completely leaning yeah. back, like they could not give a crap about what's going on. It's like, I feel like a part of it is showmanship to, to uh, get in your opponent's head. Yeah, I think from my end, like, I've been on stream many times, like uh, also a streamer myself, right? I know many people are watching and often rooting for me when I look back at chat. And I just have no shame. <laughs> I have no, I don't care how people look at me if I make a weird face. I don't care. I know what I look like. Yeah. I, 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 feel, I feel that way too. And I've... Uh... I feel that uh, it's more interesting to watch when, uh, for me at least, when when people are animated. 
So I thought to myself, you know what? I'm uh, I'm not gonna keep it in because when I play at home, I'm swearing and I'm I'm making faces and I'm going oh I because when when I make a bad play and I'm going yes when I make a good play <laughs> and yeah exactly and I've decided that uh, whenever I play as like especially on stream I need to be as comfortable and I take it as close to back at home as I can be because it's such a fish out of water situation for me mm -hmm. I'm probably for everyone playing on stream so I just like got to make it as close to my regular playing environment as possible so that's that's, that's basically what I'm doing but it's One, it's yeah it's it's a lot harder down at like the tables because then you're sitting uh, crunched together and you're so close to your opponent so uh may, like being that animated would like disturb maybe a whole table so i try to like tone it down then yeah on stream, i think like I also you, you want to keep respect for it if you're like yes and then your exactly. opponent hears that it might be a little bit you know uncomfortable yeah absolutely and i'm like i mentioned earlier i don't want to come off as an arrogant prick so i save my emotions for stream uh when i feel like it's more acceptable uh um, sure. to yeah so I, I i don't i don't want to step on people's toes when we're down by the tables i have one more question about the stream before we get into the end stuff and it's uh it's something that because yeah you did your little recap stream and Colin was in the chat as well. And they were talking about the red beard situation and the thing. And then we were talking about your guys' shirts because you guys had very matchy kind of outfits. Yeah. And then also your guys' beards. And I asked Colin who he thought had the better beard. And so I just want to ask you too, who do you think has the better beard between you and Colin? I like, I ha it's, it's an open shot question. I I do have a better beard than Colin. I don't know he had a better question. Shirt than me. Yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> he had a better shirt than me, but um, but um, like I'm a bit older, uh, and um, it's uh, he's he's blonde, he's he's like light blonde, I'm like dark blonde, I guess. Uh, so my beard kind of just uh, look when it when it's darker it's more uh i don't know the word but it's 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 more uh clear it it it, it shows more yeah. it's more of a contrast yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, I know all about yeah. it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly <laughs> like you hardly have a beard at all more time but it's <laughs> I, I keep honestly if i let it grow another week it's it's big it's massive okay show us i will not do it no it becomes <laughs> annoying there's like this yeah, threshold, but... right? If you shave it off and you have to like regrow it, there's a point where it gets really itchy and you need to like, how do I say it? Like outlast it, right? You need to get over that point until it's not itchy anymore. I just but cannot bear with it. If you, if, you clean shave, <laughs> if you clean shave with razors, then that happens. If you only use a machine, it doesn't get as itchy. Yeah, I guess. But if you I... use like beard oil, does that help at all? Or is that am uh, I just throwing out random suggestions that yeah, that's yeah, very, very that, random. That's like using hair oil for your hair. Does it like it, it makes it smooth? It doesn't like help you. I think it would actually it's probably bad. nourish I bet it would. <laughs> Perhaps it, maybe that's like that's like what lotion does. I mean, like if your skin's itchy exactly. and you put lotion on it, it makes it less Itchy. I mean, now you're talking about lotion, not oil. <laughs> yeah, but I, well, you're not putting lotion uh, yeah, yeah. in your beard. <laughs> exactly. And that's why it itches. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that was making a lot of sense. And I think that you guys are taking that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm... I don't I don't have those problems, though, I guess. Okay. So at Worlds, who are you like really looking forward to playing? Who do you hope you get matched up against? Or on the flip side, who do you just like hope that you do not get matched up with? That's an incredibly tough question, to be honest. Uh, I I actually kind of don't hope I'm faced up against Nighttime Clasher because he's just such a wild card. <laughs> and you have no idea what he's going to do. Just like, place anything, right? Just exactly. He just close his eye, pick three, and hope yeah. for the best. And he's very good with like his uh, his mechanics and how to play out the games. Uh, but he just locks in a random three. There's just like no real strategy to it. It seems he safe swapped an Alolan Sandslash against uh, Wadash. Uh, like 
he could Zubudaj just brought in his DD and farmed it down and won the game instantly. So to me, it's just uh, he would be a really tough opponent because I don't have like the same I, I, I can't apply the same approach that I used to against Colin, for example. Uh, so and but I really want to play Rise to Occasion. Uh, he's, he's a player that I, uh, think really highly of, and I respect, I respect him so much just, uh, for how he approaches games and how he explains how, like the, you know, the thought processes that he has. So, and I've played him, I think I've played him once or twice, uh, in Sylph back in the day. And I remember specifically beating him, uh, in, uh, a brawler cup for the OGs who remember that. And um, so, uh, but I I really, really liked to play him on the big stage. And he's just a phenomenal guy as well. So he's got all the respect for me. And he, he would be an opponent I'm looking incredibly much forward to facing. Cool. Martin, you want to lead us into the last? Yeah, so that will begin the Crap Roller and the Champion question. Okay. And in this yeah. case, the Crap Roller is someone who you think is really good, but not really well known yet. And the other one is someone who's already well known and someone who may or may not win worlds, for example. If you were to pick a person for those, who would that be? Um, you may say inadequate for the winning, <laughs> but but no uh, one ever does. <laughs> but uh, I don't feel like you fit into either of those categories. <laughs> no, you. Um, Careful what you say. Time... We might still match somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, the crab roller for my um, my the answer for a crab roller would be Andy Youth. Uh, he, I know that he's very well known uh, amongst a lot of veterans because he's been around for a while. Uh, he plays just meticulously. And he, uh, we had a local challenge right before Dortmund. I played the same team and he played a, a team that he, a similar team to uh, what I this is wireless and brought to Liverpool. And he 3 0'd me. Like, there was no doubt about it. He, he, he just steamrolled me completely. So I almost changed my team only because of him and because of how well he did against me. Because I thought, I felt that if I face this team and I play it well, I'm just, I just don't have a chance, but um, I, I feel like I've faced an even worse team, but Andy have just, he just outplayed me in every sense of the game. Uh, he's, he's an incredible player in my opinion, but he's your guys' yeah. meme maker too, isn't he? Yeah. I, well, we make a lot of memes together. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, he's not the funny one. He's not the only funny one is what you're yeah, saying. Not the only one, but he runs the Twitter account. So he's he's got a lot of wit. Uh, but um, uh, Galax Cobolton also is a great memer. Excellent memer. But yeah, Andy Uf, Andy Uf, super fun guy and uh, an incredible battler. Um, Puts, uh, I, I need to put some respect on his name. Excellent. And what about your mid-champion? Someone who's really well-known and you think has a shot of winning worlds. And you can say inadequance. Um, I, I really believe that Martin do have a shot of winning worlds. Like, he was top eight last year. It's... it's he was I mean, it's a, it's a given, isn't it? Uh, were you top eight or top ten? Top 10, I guess. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. But I mean, still though, still. Yeah. Though. It's still phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Uh, and I was rooting for you. Uh, so don't mind that. But uh, for me, the biggest favorite, the biggest man champion is Potoman. Uh, that guy's just insane. Uh, he's whenever he like he, he can find win conditions in any situation and he plays so clever in any situation that he is. And when he won in Gdansk, 
I, uh, I believe it was Gdansk or if it was when yeah, he was lost. Gdansk. It was Gdansk. Yeah, no, actually, I think it was uh, in Barcelona. Oh, uh, the one when, he lost. When, yeah, the one yeah. he lost. Oh, yeah, yeah. I believe he caught his Gligar on the way there because he didn't have a Gligar. So, <laughs> and it, it, it's like uh super high attack mid defense super low hp or something like that and uh he just well this works and he <laughs> got it in and it just worked out for him and he's just a, such an incredible player that um it doesn't matter if he has the ivs or like he, he's just gonna take the tools he has and he's gonna force them down your throat until you throw up <laughs> Well, I haven't seen that happen yet, but yeah, yeah he's been pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like uh, on his day he's unplayable. Uh, I'm, I'm scared. I'm really scared of Piedmont, actually. Oh, I have one last final question. Then on that note, last year, uh, because you have a YouTube channel where yep. you like make a lot of content about mostly the show six format, a couple of Go Battle League battles as well. But uh, you made like a top ten contenders to win worlds. Um, yeah. How did it? How are your predictions? And then also, are you going to make one again this year so we can see the comparison for who will make it? And will oh, you be yeah. on your own predictions? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself in number one. The oh, whole, yeah. he's going to making the whole tier list now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I did pretty all right. Um, I had Wudash as number three, which, he, which he got. <laughs> um, Zardi didn't end up playing. He didn't make it there. I uh, no, he did. He but did. all the Brazilians like. I don't yeah, know they... what happened, man, but yeah, they did not but, do well. uh, like fish out of water for Brazilians outside of Brazil. Uh, but um, and also I had its accent on top 10. Uh, I believe I had him on top five. Uh, <clears throat> but apart from that, it wasn't as impressive. Um, I had some Latin Americans. I had um, uh, oh, I can't remember all of them. Bibilicious human catcher bug. They mm -hmm. didn't. They didn't follow through. Uh, but I did have as a dark horse for the entire thing. Rubik's master. I was the only one who brought up Rubik's master before Worlds as a potential contender because his his team building skills are on point, Negative, like second to none. I'd I'd say. Well, I'm excited to see your new tier list when uh, when all the candidates get put in. I think it's a uh, NAIC, right? That's the that's the last point in the season that people can get championship points. Yep, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So, plenty of time to make a video, Marcus. Yeah. So I need some funding to go to NAIC, guys. <laughs> Sponsors. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are, I mean, like Martin's put out the call for, I think I'm going to be there as well, because I'm going to be in are the you? US. Yeah, yeah, never been to New Orleans before. And uh, Will you play as American or European? Oh, uh, European. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Don't feel it. I mean, there's only one answer to that question in this company. And then, uh... <laughs> I yeah, exactly. I... I don't know what if, if I do really horrible, then man, maybe you guys want me to say NA. So then it's like. A... <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. No, she's, she's an NA. Yeah, Midwest... no, no, she's American battler. Oh. Yeah, Midwestern. Midwestern. Yep. All right. Well, I think we uh, we had it for uh, this episode then. Thank you so much, uh, Marcus, for coming on once more. It was a, a pleasure. Yeah, and congrats you, again for winning Dortmund. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me on. It's been a blast. I truly enjoy just chatting with you guys, and yeah, I I appreciate you giving me giving me the stage. I I'm super super grateful. Yeah, no worries. It's it. In fact, it should be the only uh, one you should say yes to. Yeah, it should be at least the very first uh, one <laughs> if we're, if you're going to be our first guest. But uh, that's, that's beside the point. I horn. haven't I haven't done any other podcast yet. Yet. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm just uh, investing with you. <laughs> yeah, well, I actually feel kind of bad about that because I did say yes to you guys. And then, <laughs> uh, and then I wanted to do yours first. Uh -huh. uh, it, uh, but he said, hey, can you do it Wednesday? And I thought, you know what? I can do it Wednesday. On Valentine's so, Day. Thank you so much. Yeah, friend. yeah. What a wonderful gift to all of us. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's because I heart you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it anyway um sorry about that but also thank you so much for letting me just speak my mind and um say what i want to say yeah i mean tell you what if if you win another regional doesn't matter the time frame we'll have you back on as a you'll be our first third guest so <laughs> how's that was, sound so uh after utrecht right yeah okay yeah yeah Great. i'll have some time after see you in three weeks <laughs>
<laughs> and, and for all of our new listeners as well, we're going to put out content, I believe, every Thursday is the day that we're looking for. So look for new episodes every Thursday with members of the PvP community talking about this wonderful tap tap game. 